My name is Russell Broom. I'm a guitar player, musician, producer, songwriter, film composer, music guy, I guess, uh, from Calgary, Alberta. And uh, I'm out here at OCL Studios today talking about how often I use Boss guitar pedals, which is every day. My musical influences really do vary from, from just being aware and listening to country at a really early age and then more classic rock stuff and the Jimi Hendrixes and Jimmy Pages being exposed to that, to gravitating more towards uh, jazz players like Joe Pass and, and even like early Bill Frizzell and stuff like that, to uh, more new wave stuff like U2 and XTC and uh, you know Joy Division and stuff like that. So it's pretty varied. As far as playing guitar, yeah, I was trying to emulate all those guys to some degree and try and create some sort of musical soup where they all had relevance but yet you couldn't discern that I'd stolen enough from anybody to completely find out where my influences are. So. The Calgary music scene has always been really unique because we're quite isolated. Um, Growing up here, it was kind of like being a flower in the concrete, you know. You're not supposed to be a musician in Calgary. You're supposed to be an engineer or an oil guy or some other sort of legitimate form of work or employment. But being an artist, there was definitely a lot to fuel you as far as spite <laughs> and to kind of want to go against the grain and do something unique. And because we weren't a musical center, it was easy to develop on your own without a lot of influences from other people and without a lot of people telling you you were doing it wrong. My favorite times, when I worked with Jan Arden, we would play these theater shows, which were maybe between two and 5,000 people, which is the perfect size of venue and the perfect style of venue because people are seated and they have to listen to you. Usually the best shows, you would finish a song and there's about a second and a half to two seconds of complete silence before people applause, because you can tell that we're really listening to what was going on. The more I got into producing, guitar became something I was a lot more irreverent with and a little more lighthearted about, rather than when I was touring as a guitar player, that being my focus and putting all of my energy into that one thing. There's a young guy out here named Joe Nolan who's an exceptional singer-songwriter and uh, he would routinely write four to five songs a week and we would do a show and he would just say, I'm playing a new song and I'm like, I've never heard it and there's people in the venue, is this okay? And he's like, I'm in G, here we go. And he would just start it. And I found those moments probably equally as inspiring as being completely engaged with an audience because you're completely engaged with the artist you're playing with and you're both discovering and reacting um, from what one another is doing. So, yeah, there's lots of good ways to be inspired if you pay attention when you play. Uh, when I was 14 years old, I went to Studio 9 Music in Calgary, Alberta, where I had a job as a guitar teacher. Thank goodness someone would employ me. But um, they had a DD2 for $179, and uh, I saved up and got that pedal, my first delay pedal was a DD2 and uh, it was great and you know I've gone through a number of boss pedals over the years and and uh, right now I'm using the DD500 and I have been using the DD7 for the past five years on my main pedal board and it ends up on every record I work on so yeah all of my life so I bought my first one when I was 14 so I guess it's been 10 years since I've been using boss pedals well okay a little longer than that uh, well they make every note I play last longer so I have to play less, which is great. Um, boss pedals are great that way, you know, especially delay pedals. You play one note, it goes on for a long time, and you still get paid the same amount as a guy that plays all the notes. So they've saved me a lot of effort and kept me employed. I think living in, one of the benefits of living in Calgary as a musician, it makes you be diverse because to make a living you have to do a few different things. So with that level of diversity, 
it's hard not to keep things fresh and interesting. I mean, I'm always drawn, I'm never drawn to any style of music. It's more of the energy of the people I'm working with or the some musical quality that I find inspiring. And because I'm not a craftsperson, I'm not like a very developed, read the black dots, play the same thing every time kind of musician. It's always, my whole career has been based on just being instinctual and trying to react in the moment to what music is happening. So if I meet an artist who's a country artist that I find compelling and I want to work with, the genre isn't really relevant to me. It's more the musicality and the energy coming out of the person and the songs. I think young people pursuing a music career in this day and age, um, you have to work harder than everyone else. You have to be extremely responsible and uh, follow through with the promises you make. Simple life things, but I think in the music world they tend to cut through because artists and such tend to be more of a slave to the muse than slave to other people's schedules and such. But I think it's really important to be, as a musician, really respectful to the environments you're in try and be creative and contribute and listen to what's going on around you and don't be afraid to try new things at other people's suggestions even if you don't agree with them. Um, just lots of flexibility and also the ability to learn your job from a few different viewpoints. You know, I became a, I think I became a better guitar player when I produced records because I understood the role of a guitar in a record from that point of view. And I became a better producer when I started playing guitar because I could understand the issues a guitar player would face in the studio and how a band, um, how to get the best out of a band when they're being produced. Because I've been on both sides of the, the uh, glass in the control room and the tracking room of a studio. So I think it's, it's trying to learn a bit of everything and then follow what you're most passionate about and follow it further than anyone else is daring to go. Because you do have to work harder and try and cut through the other people that want to do the same job. You know, if I don't want to do a session and I say no, there's probably 30 guys I can refer to to do that who are ready and willing to take the job. And the same thing happens for me. If someone says no and I get a call, I'll be right there. So there's a lot of competition and you have to really know your stuff and also be extremely open that when you show up in a creative environment to sort of have the tools to go with the flow and see where it's going to take you and get your skill set up to the degree where you are flexible enough to create something special and unique within that moment, which is ideally what anyone's trying to do with music.